guys, it's Matt here. Hope you're doing well. I want to talk to you for the next few minutes about how to transform your life. And the, the big question I think you got to ask is, do you want to transform your life? If you're tired of settling for the same old, same old each day and you want to live a life that's, that's bigger than even you can imagine for yourself, practice these three things and I can promise you, you will see a transformed life. The Apostle Paul says in the book of Romans chapter 12, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that's what I want to mention a few, a few points today that can help you with that, that really helped me. I was saved at a young age, but it wasn't until five or six years ago when I heard Andy Stanley go over a few of these concepts that it really, really changed my spiritual walk. It made my faith a lot bolder. It helped me in my daily walk. And I think if you apply these to your life, they can really help you too. The first thing is God wants something for you, not from you. God wants something for you, not from you. Let that sink in. When you start to develop that mindset, you start to think, wait a minute. These aren't just commandments to hold me down. God is not restraining me or, or keeping me from a good time. What he's actually doing is wanting something for my life. Uh, John 10.10, 10, he wants us to have life and life more abundantly. When you start to comprehend that and say, wait a minute, God is not trying to bog me down, not trying to bring guilt in my life. He wants me to have a better life. Remember, God created us, so why would he create something and then just want his followers, his people, to live this defeated and mediocre life. It, it doesn't make sense if you think about it. He wants us to have life and have life more abundantly. So that's the first concept. God wants something for you, not from you. Write that down. Um, keep that fresh in your mind. It will re really change the way you think. The second thing is I heard a preacher talking about the other day. Ask yourself, are you living for affirmation or from affirmation? For or from? A person that's living for affirmation, they're constantly looking for acceptance. They want to make sure they're making enough money, that their job status is good enough, that they have a, um, they're a good spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend or, or the lack of. They, they, they feel like they're incompetent. Maybe you think you're not smart enough or not um, attractive enough or not in good enough shape or, or just something. Maybe your parents didn't give you the confidence they should have as, at a young age. So you're constantly looking for affirmation as opposed to someone looking, f living from affirmation. Usually as a child, the parents gave them that confidence and they taught them who they are and their worth. And, and my challenge for you today is I want you to realize, get your worth from the cross. God sent his only begotten son, says he who knew no sin became sin so that we might become his righteousness. No greater love hath any man than to lay his life down for his brother. And the God, the creator of this entire world, sent his son to be nailed on a cross for you and for me. If, if that doesn't give you affirmation, it doesn't matter what people around you say. If you're being bullied, if you uh, lost your job, if you're uh, in a lot of debt, whatever it is, you can still wake up every single day with that unspeakable joy because... You're living from affirmation. You know your worth because of the cross. If you ever want to know what you're worth, look at the cross. It'll tell you. It, the cross gives your worth. You're worth everything to God. The last thing is comparing the, going back and forth with this concept. You have to versus you get to. You, if A lot of people look at it... Um, I have to do this. I have to serve God. I have to tell others about Him. Um, that's one way to do it, but you get so much more out of it if you look at it as you get to do it. Again, this is the God, the creator of the entire universe that has allowed you, He has called you a friend. He has called you a child of God. You, are, you get the opportunity to tell others about Him. You get to go to church and worship Him. You get to wake up each day and say, what do you want from me, God? What's your will for my life? It's not that you have to. Remember, God's commandments are for us. Not He's not trying to get something from us. They're for us. So when we start saying, hey, we get to do this for God, it, it makes all the difference in the world. A good example that I use a lot when I'm talking to different people is exercise. 
If you say, I have to go hit the treadmill, I have to lift weights, oh, I have to do this, you, you're constantly being defeated as opposed to you get to exercise. When you exercise, your, your confidence is better, your health is better, you, um, you feel better about yourself, it makes you more social, your clothes fit better, the list goes on and on. So it's not that you have to exercise, you get to exercise. Thank God every day, man, these arms and these legs and this sound mind and this body that's able to function. Again, it is just being transformed by your mind. You don't have to do something, you get to do something. So the next time you're thinking about doing something for the Lord, say, am I looking at this like I have to do it or I get to do it? Because this one thought, this, this paradigm shift can really transform your works for the Lord. Um, we, we, get to, we, we get to do things for the creator of this whole world. It is unbelievable to think about why he called me to do certain things. I have no idea. To make disciples and tell others about Christ, I have no idea. I can't explain it. But it's such an honor. And if you're watching this video, same for you. God has put, um, God has given you some talent. You might think, well, I don't, I can't play music or I can't sing or I'm not a good speaker or whatever it is. I can promise you, God's given each of you some talent that can really be used by Him. It might be just in encouraging, um, encouraging other people or just listening. There's a big need for listeners. Just If somebody's hurting or somebody's in need, just listen to them and let them know, you know you're worth something to God. The list goes on and on. Um, just, just remember these things. God wants something for you, not from you. Try to live your life from affirmation, not for affirmation, because we got our... We got our worth through the cross, and you get to do something for the Lord. You don't have to do something. Hope this helps you in your spiritual walk. If you have any questions, shoot me a message. Have a great day, and God bless you.